Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a question many of you have been asking over the past few months. Joe, which airline do you work for now? Now I can make an official statement on that and we'll talk about my previous company a little bit and I'll give you guys some advice on how to start your airline career. So let's get started. I'm sure many of you knew that my former employer was Germany's second largest airline, Air Berlin. And I must admit, I had the time of my life with Air Berlin, who which I flew for the past eight years. Transitioning from the Beach King Air 200 to the Airbus A320 was a huge step, but I fell in love with the A320 from day one. I used to nickname it the baby bus compared to its larger mother, the Airbus A300. But most importantly, Air Berlin gave me the wings I needed to start my career in the airline industry. So over the course of time, I was based one year in Stuttgart, three years in Dusseldorf, and after four years on being on the waiting list for my home base Munich, I got a call on my 30th birthday by my friend Patricia, who worked at Human Resources saying, hey Joe, a colleague of yours canceled his transfer to Munich, you're next on the list, now is the chance to get transferred, otherwise you have to wait another three to four years. Can you imagine the birthday celebration that weekend with my boys in Munich? It was legend. Wait for it, dairy. <laughs> so another four years of Airbus flying out of my hometown and it just couldn't get any better than that. 20 minutes to work by car, nicest colleagues, which many of them just came from the Boeing 737 and lots of them kept saying, Joe, if you haven't flown a Boeing in your life, you haven't really flown a plane so far. And I kept replying, I would love to fly the 747 one day. That's always been my dream. And having said that, a few months later, there was an announcement on our intranet stating, fly the 747 for two years via a temporary employment contract. You didn't have to ask me twice, I immediately applied. So I flew up to Berlin to have an interview and got to meet three very interesting people, the chief pilot, a psychologist, and a lady who was the head of recruitment. The interview lasted roughly an hour in which they were very straightforward about their pros and cons of their airline and so was I about my strengths and weaknesses. Now don't expect that from every airline because a lot of them shine with their advantages but never talk freely about their disadvantages. Nevertheless, after 20 minutes discussion, the lady from the recruitment called me back in and with a smile on their face, they congratulated me that I could start ASAP. And I was hooked and immediately wanted to get started. But sadly, a few weeks later, Air Berlin called me up and said, Joe, we're very sorry, but we're gonna have to stop this project as we're going to face a shortage in pilots very soon and we need every pilot to stay with us. So my dream of flying the 747 got ripped away from me. Now, you might say, why don't you just quit your job with Air Berlin? Well, I was in a comfortable position with seven years of seniority, a good salary, and I wouldn't want to give up my seniority in terms of becoming a captain. Unfortunately, over the last three years with Air Berlin, my colleagues and I could literally see the company shutting down. If you think about it, I've flown for seven different CEOs within eight years. That just speaks for itself but I'm not going to go too much in detail why the company shut down. Nevertheless, my last flight was on the 27th of October from Catania to Munich with an A320 and from that day on, I was without a job for the first time in my pilot career and believe me, living in uncertainty how your life will go on is not the best feeling in the world. Now literally a day later after my last flight, I got an email from the nice lady who I've met two years ago at the interview in Berlin. Now she kindly offered me a job with her company on the Boeing 747 if I was still interested. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy that they still thought about me after such a long time. I would have had to pass the assessment once again, but still, what a great opportunity. So enough mourning about losing my job, I had to get my game back on. So first things first, to pass the screening in the Boeing 747 simulator, I needed a crash course on how to fly the Boeing 747. And believe me, there is a big difference between flying an Airbus and a Boeing. So I studied like crazy, memorized pitch and power settings and prepared the best I could because I knew this was a chance of a lifetime. 
and her studying paid off. After three days of psychometric tests, multitasking exercises, group and role plays with other candidates, one hour sim screening, another hour interview, the chief pilot smiled at me and shook my hand and said, welcome to. <laughs> I'll give you a hint, the company is based in one of the smallest countries within Europe. They operate 26 Boeing 747s, fly to 90 destinations there where they launch customer of the Boeing 747-8 freighter, so you see it's a cargo company, and they're one of the most profitable air cargo companies in the world. And the name of the company? <laughs> Cargo looks. Now you cannot imagine how thankful I was for this amazing opportunity to fly for such a great airline. Now my type rating buddies and I started with our training in mid-March and so far it's been absolutely mind-blowing. The professionalism they bring to the training is outstanding and in return they expect that from their pilots. So the stuff we've learned so far and the experience we've gained in the past two months I mentioned that I want to write a book about it. I mean, this book just writes it by itself. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to a bright future with Cargo Looks and getting to fly the queen of the skies for me is a once in a lifetime chance. I mean, if you think about it, it is a plane which is going to be retired in a couple of years. So presumably we're gonna get a new type rating after that. And I'm excited to get to know these very experienced captains and to fly and learn from them. Because from now on, it's gonna be a very long learning curve in many areas, not just the plane, but the diversity of their operation. For example, taking off at minus 30 degrees in Novosibirsk and landing at plus 30 degrees in Hong Kong, there is a lot to take into account. Now, or landing at high altitude airports such as Quito in Ecuador or Mexico City, the list is endless. Now the operation is gonna be a life changer, that's one for sure. But how can you change your life around after finishing flight school? I so often get asked this question, Joe, how did you get from little Cessna into the Airbus cockpit? I'm gonna give it to you straight. It was hard work and it was not easy. Why do I say it's not easy? Because that's mostly the follow-up question is becoming a pilot easy? <laughs> so once you've completed flight school training, I want you to apply to any little company that has a set of wings with either a piston driven or a turboprop propeller. I don't care. I found a job with a skydiving company, so can you. I had to move away from home just to fly airplanes, so can you. I never kept my dream out of sight. You constantly have to push forward. But Joe, airlines require jet hours. That is partly true because I had 500 hours on propeller driven planes and I still got a job on an Airbus. How? Because I showed them that I did something sensible with my time, otherwise I would have had a gap of two years after finishing flight school by doing absolutely nothing. Would you want to hire someone who's been sitting around on his couch for two years rather than someone who got some airtime? I highly doubt that. So airlines want to see that you have the courage to think outside of the box and take 100% responsibility for your life and that sometimes means flying skydivers to 14,000 feet 32 times a day and washing the plane by hand after your last landing. It just shows that you're not a quitter, instead you made your time count. And I don't get intimidated by people saying propeller hours are worthless. They are not. I've spoken to so many chief pilots and recruiters and the answer was always the same. Hours in the air are valuable. And don't ask me if becoming a pilot is easy. If it were so easy, everyone would fly to work in their own planes, wouldn't they? So no, to become a pilot, you need to have endurance courage, willpower and motivation. Also, be that guy or girl who comes out of flight school and is willing to go the extra mile for the dream job. Do you remember my video about the 10 reasons why not to become a pilot? I've mentioned that if you change your employer, you'll lose all your gain seniority from your previous company. I'm no exception to that rule, so my eight year seniority got lost by the day I lost my job. So I am right at the bottom of the seniority list, so I have to wait many, many more years to become a captain. And this just shows, if you're not willing to work hard, then just forget about it. 
I'm sorry for being a little direct at the end, but if others won't tell you, I will definitely will. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you won't miss out upcoming videos. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. See you next week. All the best, your Captain Joe.